Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Unlocking the Power of AAV and LVV Analytics, Insights and Strategies for Optimizing Viral Vector Purity Analysis. I am Shelley Mulock of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar has been organized by Biotechne using the LabRoots platform. To, earn more, to learn more about Biotechne products and services, please visit their website at bio-techne.com. As a reminder, today's webinar is educational and thus offers free continuing education credits. Please click on the continuing education icon on the far left of your screen to obtain your credits. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. Also, if you experience any technical questions, you can utilize the QA box and we will assist you directly. I'd like to now cordially welcome today's speaker, Dr. Chris Hager, Director of Application Science, Analytical Solutions Division of Biotechne. Welcome, Dr. Hager. The floor is yours. Thank you for the introduction. It's a pleasure to be back with you today at LabRoots to talk about unlocking the power of AAV and LVV analytics. Today, we will talk about insights and strategies for optimizing viral vector purity analysis on our Maurice platform. Viruses have a natural ability to deliver genetic material into cells, and therefore some gene therapy products are derived from viruses. Once viruses have been modified to remove the ability to cause infectious disease, these modified viruses can be used as vectors or vehicles to carry therapeutic genes into human cells. The majority of current cell and gene therapies leverage three key viral vectors for direct gene therapy via in vivo delivery, AAVs and adenovirus are being directly administered to the patient. The other major therapy, which happens ex vivo, or also known as cell therapy, requires extracting cells from the patient and modifying these cells by either viral or non-viral approaches. As shown in the schematic, lentivirus is the main viral vector used for transforming cells in ex vivo cell therapy. After the cells have been programmed, they are reintroduced into the patient where the cells can now target a tumor. Importantly, all three viruses need to be produced in high amounts with consistency and quality. There are a battery of tests to monitor these parameters and what's typically referred to as viral vector analytics. There are several challenges associated with analyzing viral vectors. First, viruses are complex and require extensive characterization. Unlike monoclonal antibodies, Viruses contain both a protein as well as a genetic component. And unlike monoclonal antibodies, viruses share less in common with each other, requiring independent methods to be developed for each virus. Many analytical platforms serve a single purpose, requiring significant capital and infrastructure investments to test for all CQAs across various products. Most analytical platforms require large sample volumes of pure or near pure material. This makes method development for analytical platforms challenging. And lastly, some analytical platforms require years of experience to operate, making these platforms challenging to implement in QC. Maurice is the next generation capillary electrophoresis platform to support viral vector analytics and address these challenges. Maurice has two separation modes. CESCS, which separates proteins by size, can be used for viral vector identity and purity analysis of viral vectors. Maurice also has the gold standard image CIF, which is ideal for charge heterogeneity analysis of biotherapeutics and specifically for capsid content and stability analysis of viral vectors. The platform is capable of providing answers in as few as five and a half minutes, allowing for both fast answers as well as rapid method development. Our Compass for I software is 21 part 11 CFR compliant 
and features an optional Empower control capability for those already operating in the Empower ecosystem. And lastly, something many QC departments absolutely love about Maurice is the ease of use. The instrument is plug and play. Plug in your cartridge, consumables and samples, and get running almost as fast as you can eat your lunch. The cartridges dictate the run mode. We have a CIEF cartridge, the brand new Flex cartridge for CIEF fractionation, the CESDS Plus cartridge, and the Turbo CESDS cartridge. Today, we will be focusing on data from the CESDS Plus and Turbo CESDS cartridges for viral vector analysis. In addition to being easy to use, as I mentioned before, the Maurice platform solves the other key challenges by supporting several viral vector CQAs on a single capillary electrophoresis platform with a small footprint and modest capital investment. Maurice CESDS can support viral vector identity, potency, and purity. Additionally, with our CIF mode, capsid content analysis can be enabled and can help with particle stability characterization as well. Viral vector purity is an important critical quality attribute that needs to be assessed as we were just discussing. The ICH Q6B states that in addition to evaluating the purity of the drug substance and drug product, the manufacturer should also assess impurities which may be present. They can be of known structure, partially characterized, or unidentified. Talking about these impurities, Dark Horse Consulting released a white paper a few months ago that nicely summarizes types of impurities found in viral vectors. The first, called process-related impurities, include things like host cell DNA and host cell protein, media components, downstream processing reagents like endonucleases. And AV capsid protein stoichiometry can also be classified here. The other type of impurities, known as product-related impurities, include degraded viral vectors, empty particles, as well as aggregated viral particles. We have developed a robust CESDS method to look at the viral vector purity across AAV, lentivirus, and adenovirus. Let's now take a look at the method. Let's walk through our viral vector purity method from Maurice CESDS. Because viral vectors are typically formulated with salts to improve stability, and these salts can influence CESDS electrokinetic injection, we developed an approach that easily removes excipients and can permit sample concentration. First, we take an AAV virus sample and add four times the volume of ice cold acetone to precipitate the virus. We like to put these samples at minus 20 degrees C for an hour, but even immediately after acetone precipitation does work. To pellet the precipitate, next centrifuge the sample at 15,000 times G for 10 minutes and then decant the supernatant, letting the pellet dry for five minutes before proceeding to the next step, which is reconstitution and denaturation. Below is a table showing the various reconstitution and denaturing conditions for AAV, lentivirus, and adenovirus. You'll note that lentivirus has a different reconstitution buffer compared to adenovirus and AAV, and Lentivirus also has different denaturation conditions. We reduce the samples across all three viruses, and I've importantly included here our pre-inactivation step. Because both lentivirus and adenovirus are considered BSL2, we pre-inactivate these before working with them, as described in the table. After the samples have been denatured, we cool them on ice and centrifuge. Then we add three to six fold volume of water, which is for water stacking and mix. This significantly dilutes out any remaining sample components. It's important here to not reheat the sample and then analyze on Maurice. The acetone precipitation method I just described can increase signal six fold without the adjustment of sample volume. Shown on this slide is an AV9 sample for CESCS analysis. We either directly analyzed a 20 microliter AV9 sample, shown in blue, 
or processed 20 microliters through the workflow I just described and reconstituted in 20 microliters of CSDS plus buffer, shown in orange. There's a 6x increase in signal across the three capsid proteins. Now, if you're only looking at AAV capsid ratio, as shown by the table here, you don't need to precipitate your sample and can get your answer directly. However, if you're looking for impurities, as shown in this inset, the precipitation approach affords better detection of lower molecular weight impurities, as well as the AAV genome. While there are varied methods to prepare the viral vectors as discussed on the previous slide, the good news is that the Maurice CESDS methods are platform. In fact, we use the default Maurice CESDS methods for all of our viral vector analysis. Shown here are both the Turbo CESDS and CESDS Plus cartridge conditions and run conditions that we use, including both the injection times and voltages and the separation times and voltages. Now that we have our viral vector prep work in hand, as well as the Maurice methods, let's start taking a look at the individual viruses and some Maurice data to help support CQA analysis. Adeno-associated viruses, or AAVs, are mainly used in in vivo gene therapy. AAVs are small viruses at around 25 nanometers and contain a single-stranded DNA genome of approximately 4.7 kilobases. From a protein perspective, there are three capsid coproteins, VP1, VP2, and VP3, that form a 60 mer capsid. Tropism is dictated by different serotypes, for example, AAV1 versus 2 versus 3, and so on. AAVs are mostly non-integrating and have low immunogenicity, making them quite attractive gene therapy delivery vehicles. And lastly, an important number here, the number of clinical trials is over 250, just demonstrating the vast importance and utility of these viruses for gene therapy. Let's now take a look at some data. The three AAV capsid proteins, VP1, VP2, and VP3, assemble them to a 60 mer capsid at a theoretical ratio of 1 to 1 to 10. Experimentally, this ratio, also called capsid protein stoichiometry, varies widely based on serotype, production system, and even production batch. Whatever the reason, Maurice can accurately measure the ratio of these proteins. Shown on the left are five AV9 vectors with different cargos, all produced in SF9 insect cells. The three viral proteins, VP3, VP2, and VP1, are clearly resolved from each other, allowing for highly accurate quantification. The capsid stoichiometries are shown in the table and ranged from 16 to 1 to 1 up to nearly 27 to 1 to 1 for VP3 to 2 to 1. These ratios increase with the size of the cargo, suggesting that more VP3 is needed to encapsulate the genome. We also looked at different serotypes as shown on the right. This time we evaluated AV1, AV6, and AV9, all with the same cargo. The capsid stoichiometries are much closer in these samples at approximately 14 to 1 to 1. In addition, the method can be used as an identity assay, as only AAV1 and AAV6 have the small VP3 truncation running right below the VP3 peak. The CESCS method also produces highly consistent AAV capsid protein stoichiometries. Here we are looking at data generated on a CES turbo cartridge where we prepared 10 independent AAV9 preparations and injected for a total of 93 times. Shown in the middle is a Turbo CSCS run summary looking at three AAV preparations and 18 injections per day for three days. And on the right is our CSCS Plus result for 45 injections from a single well of AAV9. All these samples were analyzed at 4 times 10 to the 11th viral particles per well. In the table on the bottom left, 
there's a summary of the average capsid ratios or stoichiometries obtained from either the turbo cartridge for one day, three days, or the CESCS plus cartridge result. As can be seen, the capsid ratio across all three of these examples is quite consistent at approximately 15 to 0.8 to 1. Shown in the table on the bottom right is the precision of the percent peak area across the three tests and the three viral proteins, showing that the results are highly consistent both within a run and day to day across two different CESCS cartridges. After testing the method reproducibility, we tested the linearity of the method. To do this, we took various starting volumes of a 1 times 10 to the 13th VP per mil sample of AV9 from 40 microliters down to 1 microliter and processed them through the workflow I described earlier before analysis on Maurice. This sample range equates to a test between 10 to the 13th and 10 to the 11th viral particles per mil. We were able to detect signal using as little as 5 microliters of the stock material and observed excellent linearity across the test range as shown on the right. Because Maurice is ideally suited for late stage products, this detection range is nicely in line with AV concentrations available at these stages of production. You may notice that there are a number of lower molecular weight impurities that can be seen in these data. Let's take a closer look at impurity analysis using a few different AV9 samples. As I mentioned earlier, the precipitation method affords better detection of impurities. Taking the five AV9 samples with different cargo we were looking at earlier and zooming in a bit closer to these samples, we can see that they aren't 100% pure. In fact, by looking at the inset table, which measures the total purity of these samples, two of them don't even break 90% pure. The Maurice ESCS method can measure low levels impurities as shown across the various samples. Because we are using direct detection with Maurice, identifying these impurities isn't possible. However, I remind you that Biotechni offers ultra-sensitive assays for both HEK293T detection as well as NUC-A or benzenase residuals on our Simpleplex platform. Let's now switch gears and take a look at lentivirus. Moving on to lentiviral vectors, or LVVs, their main use is for ex vivo gene-modified cell therapy. LVV particles are significantly larger than AAVs, measuring between 80 and 100 nanometers. Unlike AAVs, LVVs have a single-stranded RNA genome, and it's about double the size of the AAV genome. Lentiviral vectors are significantly more complex than AAVs, being an envelope virus, and contain at least 18 proteins. A major protein, P24, forms the capsid coat and is used for viral titer. LVVs also contain 35% lipid and 3% carbohydrate, adding to their analytical complexity. LVV is pseudotype for delivery, most commonly with VSVG, but also with other surface glycoproteins like the Ebola glycoprotein. LVV integrates into the genome, which is one of the reasons it works well for cell therapy applications. LVV immunogenicity is moderate to high, so care must be taken when removing free virus from cell therapy preparations. And lastly, there are over 300 clinical trials currently in flight that leverage LVV, demonstrating its importance in the field. Let's now take a look at some more CSDS data. As I just mentioned, LVV is a complex virus with more than 18 proteins consistently characterized. In fact, we were able to detect 23 unique protein peaks in an LVV sample from Takara with the CESDS method. It's quite a different profile from AAV here, but allow me to provide a little insight into the identity of some of these peaks. The second peak from the left is P24 which we have verified by both recombinant protein spikins, as I'll show you in a minute, as well as by our Simple Western platform. 
and by apparent molecular weight, we can likely label peak 9 as VSVG and peak 15 as GP120. Two other notes I'd like to make here. First, peak 8 in this image could easily be divided into three peaks for an even more granular measurement of the profile. And second, we know this sample contains around 10 micrograms per mil of HEK293 host cell protein, which may contribute to the additional peaks we observe. On the right, I've performed the LVV capsid protein stoichiometry measurement, this time using P24 as the fixed protein at 1. Because P24 is the major capsid protein inside of LVV, ensuring consistency in its levels relative to other proteins is critical. Despite the highly complex profile, the method is highly reproducible. Let's first take a look at the reproducibility of a single LVV sample. Shown on the left are 45 injections from the same 20 microliter LVV sample with near perfect overlay. For analysis here, I took the total area under the curves from RMT 1.1 to 2.2. The percent RSD for these 45 injections was only 2.91%, giving high confidence that within a run, you'll get the same data across the entire batch. Let's see how the method held up to testing over multiple days. For this test, we precipitated a new LVV sample each day and performed 18 injections per day for three days for a total of 54 injections. Again, we observed a very reproducible profile with a three-day percent RST of only 3.38% for the total area, demonstrating that Maurice CESDS provides excellent reproducibility both within and between batches or days. Lastly, we more recently tested a new batch of LVV with our Turbo CESTS cartridge shown on the right. Again, we achieved excellent reproducibility at only 1.92% RST across nine injections and three sample preparations. Now, for those of you with a careful eye, you will notice that the profile of the LVV from the Turbo cartridge is different. And that's correct, and it's a completely different batch of LVV, although from the same manufacturer, Takara. This underscores how Maurice can monitor batch-to-batch -batch consistency of your viral vector products. We next explored the LVV CESCS method linearity. An LVV sample was serial diluted and analyzed on Maurice to establish method linearity as well as limited detection. Shown on the left is a dilution series of LVV from 7 times 10 to the 9th TU per mil down to 2.3 times 10 to the 8th TU per mil, compared to a blank shown in dark blue. Nearly all LVV proteins are detectable across the entire dilution range. A plot of this dilution series was used to determine the LOD as well as the LOQ as shown on the right where an R squared of 0.98 was obtained. The LOD was calculated by dividing three times the standard deviation of the response by the slope of the calibration curve and the LOQ was calculated using 10 times the standard deviation of the response divided by the slope. The LOD and LOQ values are both close to 4 times 10 to the 7th TU per mil. So taken together, the LVVCSCS method is highly reproducible as well as responsive over a wide dilution range. Quantitating the amount of P24 is one of the main methods for determining LVV viral titer, which is used to ensure proper LVV dosing for gene delivery. In this experiment, LVV samples were spiked with varying concentrations of P24 and analyzed using the Mori CESTS method. On the left is the set of electropharograms of either LVV alone, shown in the light blue, or with increasing amounts of the recombinant P24 available from Biotechni spiked in. The results of the P24 spiked in LVV titration help identify the P24 peak within this complex profile. The peak area values from this experiment were plotted against the P24 concentration to generate a titration curve shown on the right. Comparing to the relationship of one nanogram of P24 for every 10 to the fifth TU as established in the Nature publication, the titer concentration from this study was estimated to be approximately 8.5 micrograms per mil of P24 in an LVV 10 to the 9th TU per mil sample, 
which is within 15% of the theoretical value. As cell and gene therapy manufacturers increase the number of programs that are being run concurrently, the need for identity assays becomes even more critical as similar products are often produced. We've had the opportunity to compare two lentiviral vendors and have shown that our CSCS assay is an identity assay, which would be similar to monitoring different programs. Shown on the slide are two vendors of LVV with the same genetic insert analyzed at the same concentration. The profiles are both complex as expected, but vendor two has fewer peaks than vendor one. And I've called out some of the main differences with the blue arrows. We've now completed both our AAV and lentiviral work, and I've recently started working on adenovirus. Let's now take a look at our last viral vector for today's talk. Moving on to our last viral vector of today, adenovirus is experiencing a reemergence for in vivo gene therapy. Adenoviral particles are similar in size to lentivirus, but have significantly larger and double-stranded DNA genome at 36 kilobases. From a protein perspective, this virus has at least 13 unique proteins that can be divided into major and minor components, where the major proteins account for more than 60% of the content. Based on mass spec data, there are over 1,000 proteins within a single adenoviral particle. Like AAVs, adenovirus comes in different serotypes that dictate tissue tropism. And unlike the other viruses covered today, adenovirus does not integrate into the genome. High immunogenicity is experienced with adenovirus since it is thought that everyone has been infected with at least one adenovirus in their life. I know I have, and it's like a cold on steroids. Now there are of course mitigation strategies for this immunogenicity, which is clear by the number of clinical trials currently using adenovirus, a number that is more than LVV and AAV combined. Let's now take a look at some adenovirus data on Maurice. Using the method described earlier in the talk, we analyze some adenovirus type 5 CMV GFP by Maurice CSDS. Shown on the left are triplicate injections of the 10 to the 12 VP per mil sample. I've annotated several peaks that we've either confirmed by an orthogonal technique, as was the case for the purple colored hexon protein, or by molecular weight inference for the others. Additionally, we noticed that above the hexon protein, there were many irreproducible spikes. After nuclease A digestion, which is shown on the right, we were able to confirm that these peaks correspond to the AD5 genome. You can also appreciate the generation of several low molecular weight species upon genome digestion, shaded in gray in the electropherograms on the right. Similar to AAV and LVV, we looked at method reproducibility, and we're pleased to see excellent repeat injection data with a hexon protein RSD below 1%, and all RSDs under 11%. From these data, we were able to estimate the major and minor protein groups as well as individual levels. From our data, the major proteins accounted for nearly 75% of the signal, slightly higher than expected, and the minor proteins accounted for 17% of the signal, with the remaining 8% for the low molecular weight species generated by the DNA uh, genome digestion. On the right is a capsid protein ratio analysis, where I set the fiber protein to one and everything else is reported as a full difference from the fiber protein. I did this to show an example of a test measurement that could be made routinely for batch-to-batch -batch consistency testing for adenovirus. Lastly, we tested the adenovirus CESDS method linearity. Using the same adenovirus 5 stock at three times 10 of the 12 VP per mil, we independently precipitated 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, or five microliters of virus and processed as described earlier. This test range equates to three times 10 of the 12 VP per mil down to three times 10 of the 11 VP per mil. On the right is the linearity based on the average peak area of the hexon protein in the top five samples as the five microliter sample was at the noise of the method. 
Therefore, we can detect as little as 1.6 times 10 to the 9th total viral particles per well, or around 6 times 10 to the 11th VP per mil, which is about 10 microliters of stock. It's time to wrap up our time together today. Viral vectors are complex therapeutics with a wide variety of critical quality attributes that need to be routinely tested. Today, we discussed a series of robust Maurice CESTS methods that can be applied to multiple viral vectors, including AAVs, LVVs, and adenovirus. I demonstrated excellent comparability between our Turbo CESTS and CESTS Plus cartridges showing that you have excellent coverage across your entire development pipeline, whether you need ultra-fast answers with many samples or high-precision sample analysis with fewer samples in QC. And taken together, Maurice is a single analytical platform that is ideal for late-stage viral vector characterization. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and time today, and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Dr. Hecker, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for. Let's get started. So our first question is, uh, can Maurice ICIEF be used for AAV characterization? Yeah, I ho hope you can hear me okay, Shelley. Um, yeah, it's a great question. Of course, today we focused on CESDS analysis with the Maurice platform, but certainly there have been a number of great examples of using our image CIF mode for AAV analysis including both denat denatured capsid analysis as well as intact particle analysis. Oh, great. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, our next question is, how quickly were these CESDS methods developed? Yeah, so today we talked about three, right? The AAV, the Lenti, and the adenovirus. They all share kind of a common workflow, right? The precipitation and the, and the reprep and, and, and then the running. I would say that you know, we started with AAV and admittedly that took us maybe a couple of weeks to really understand and, and really develop the core method, the precipitation approach and so forth. But when, when we started to apply that to lentivirus as well as adenovirus, those were nearly turnkey, especially the adenovirus where we didn't really change anything about the prep compared to AAV. With lenti, because it was a little bit more difficult to break open, we, we certainly had to make some changes to the denaturation protocol as well as the recon buffer. But overall, you know, the AV and sorry, the adenovirus and lenti methods were both within two to three days. Wow. Okay. Um, great. Our next question is how, uh, let's see, I noticed that the capsid ratios you showed were rarely. 10 one to one in the ratio. Uh, can you comment on the difference from expected? Yeah, so that 10 to one to one is is kind of a, a mixed blessing. It's it's a theoretical number, right? So it, it, you should get theoretically 10 VP3s for every one of VP2 and every one of VP1, but experimentally that's rarely the case. There have been capsule ratios reported uh, include you know, hundreds of individual protein and it's a stochastic measurement. So it is subject to change. And, and really each sample that you have contains not a single capsid ratio, but a variety of capsid ratios. You can even have VP3 only capsids, for example. So it's not, it's not going to ever be 10 to 1 to 1 exactly. I think more importantly, if you get a reproducible capsid ratio that you can measure consistently across process steps or batches, I think that's what's really critical. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and the, the next one that we have coming in, the next question we have is uh, for adenovirus work, if the nucleus digestion causes the LMWS, is it worth doing prior to analysis? Yeah, so that's a good, a good question. I guess that'd be a little bit of personal preference. So it's absolutely, uh, you know, the right question. So the nuclease cuts all that high molecular weight DNA species from the genome, but 
Uh, in doing so, it makes those low molecular weight species, which can mask some of the very small adenoviral proteins. Um, so it really would depend on whether you are okay seeing those kind of variable DNA spikes, or if you really need that, that clean, consistent profile. Uh, so it'd really be a user's choice. Okay, excellent. Uh, the next question is, lots of questions today, it's great. The next question is, keeping the complexity of LVV in mind, which cartridge would you suggest for CESDS analysis? Yeah, so of the three viruses we talked about today, lentivirus is certainly the most complex, over 23 uh, identifiable peaks in the profile that we found, right? So um, if you're looking for the best resolution between each of those peak species, I'd recommend the PLUS cartridge. That'll give you the best resolution. Now, the, the flip side is, because the separations take 35 minutes per injection, you may want to, um, in earlier upstream samples, use the turbo cartridge, which is significantly faster at, at about eight minutes a sample. You may compromise your resolution slightly, but we've shown that the quantification between the two cartridges for LVV is quite good. Mm, that's very helpful. Okay. Um, our next question is, um, what kind of positive controls should be used on the Maurice platform? I guess I'd think about two different types of controls. The first one would be more about system suitability. And, and we certainly offer for both ImageCIF and CESDS, the system suitability molecules that essentially just tell you that your separations, your instrument, your cartridge and consumables are all working as expected. All right, so that's really just to qualify it, make sure the system is operating. And then, you know, appropriate controls for, for your program or for what you're working on, right? So, um, for example, for capsid ratio, you may want to have a known capsid ratio standard that you can use as a reference. If you're doing a tighter measurement, you're going to want a, a known tighter sample you can use for a standard curve. Um, and for things like image CIF, you may want different post-translationally modified species or different mutations, things like that. So there are a lot of controls that are probably more specific to what you're actually doing. And then there are a few controls that we do commercially offer to help with, again, that general system suitability. Excellent. All right. Well, it looks like we have time for one more question. Um, so our final question today is, uh, is the Maurice platform suitable for analysis of natural samples? And then there's a second part to the question, which is for viruses that were amplified in plants. Oh, that's a good question. I don't think we've at this time looked at any uh, viruses that have been amplified in plant, but I don't see a reason why we wouldn't be able to look at those. The um, you know, especially if it's isolated, right? So the Maurice is a direct detection system, uses absorbance, right? So you'll see everything in the sample. So very complex samples, you'll get a, a very complicated profile with. So, you know, a virus derived from plant itself, I wouldn't see a concern with. If you're trying to run a, a plant lysate, that might be something more appropriate for our simple Western technology, which is really geared towards complex samples like lysates. Um, and then the first part of that question, uh, would you mind repeating, Shelley? I got the second part, the virus and plants. Oh, not at all, no, yeah. It's, it said, is the Maurice platform suitable for analysis of natural samples? So. Yeah, so I guess I can tell you that we're analyzing some pretty wild things that are, are natural currently, like milk um, and other, you know, other things that are naturally occurring, I suppose. Um, but as, again, as I said, there's a differentiation. Maurice is great for your downstream, more direct analysis. And then you may want to look into our simple Western for those really complex natural samples like serum, plasma, and so forth. Got it. Fantastic. Well, thank you again, Dr. Heger, for your time today and for your important research. Uh, do you have any final comments for our audience? No, I mean, I'd, I'd like to thank everybody for your attendance and your great questions today. Certainly, you know, I would recommend check our website for more information. Feel free to reach out to myself or others at the organization. If you have specific questions, we're always here to help support your research.
Wonderful. Well, thank you again, Dr. Heger. We'd also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Biotechne, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their in interesting questions. Uh, questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information that you provided at the time of registration. Uh, this webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, take care, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.